It was the beginning of the Christmas vacation and it fell on the end of November, so a few days before December 2nd, 1971. So I was, I didn't know anything about it, but when I landed and I saw these incredibly open spaces, all I could think about, wow, look at the horse riding I, I can have on this vacation. This is Anita Mehra, whose father was a prominent doctor at the Iranian hospital in Dubai in the 1970s. She recalls how she first came to visit her father right before the formation of the United Arab Emirates on December 2nd, 1971. Anita was eager to do some horse riding. So I went to Zabil stables, which were probably six to eight horses next to the Zabil palace. That's it, in the middle of the desert. And I was given a a stallion, which was um, trying to, to... buck me off the entire time and uh, his highness came there to make sure that everything was okay and my father was there and I stayed on the horse um, and that became something which we had in common was our, our love of horses. Anita is remembering her encounter back in the early 70s with his highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the vice president and prime minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai. They both share passion for horses and horse racing. In 1992, Sheikh Zayed, who was the president of the UAE at the time, established the UAE Equestrian and Racing Federation, which hosted an endurance race for horses and camels. Since then, it has grown to organize renowned equestrian competitions and events all over the country. And there was always, you know, if this link to Expo is that there was always this idea that incredible events should be held in Dubai to put Dubai on the map. And definitely Expo has done that. This idea of world excellence is at the heart of the vision for Dubai, a vision that directly comes from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. In today's episode, we'll take you through the Vision Pavilion, a space unlike any other on the Expo grounds that showcases this vision. We'll hear from Marjan Faridouni, the chief experience officer at Expo, whose team curated the pavilion, as well as Anita Mehra, the senior vice president of brand and communications of Dubai airports. Anita is someone who saw Dubai grow firsthand. I'm Noon Saleh, and this is Inside Expo, an official podcast of Expo 2020 Dubai, where history is being made. Located in the Sustainability District, the Vision Pavilion is an emotional and inspiring homage to the ruler of Dubai and celebrates the vision of His Highness. The way that this space came to be is rather unique. Here's Marjan. You know, this one time, um, Her Excellency Reem Al Hashimi and I were uh, st- standing in this place and, and we oversaw the site and we were reflecting at how much progress we made. And, um, you know, I looked to her and I said, you know, this would have not been possible if we weren't given the chance to dream and to be ambitious. And that really came from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed. And as we were discussing it, it came to us very clearly that we needed to sort of pay him back in a very subtle way, in a very different way, in a way that also introduced this visionary uh, individual to uh, the rest of the world. And we wanted people to go through a journey where they understood that this journey that the city of Dubai has gone through is really um, grounded in the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and his um, father and grandfather um, before him. The Expo team knew that it needed its own dedicated space, a space to tell the vision that enabled this whole Expo. Um, And uh, it was very clear to us that Wherever we wanted uh, to speak about the journey of Dubai and the journey of His Highness, we wanted the building to be subtle. Um, So we decided to have a space that sort of reflected the city of Dubai itself. Small in uh, size, but huge in impact. The pavilion itself 
is split into three main galleries, each with a distinct style, creative interpretation, and feel. The whole pavilion, its three main galleries and transition spaces, is carefully curated to reflect the stories of His Highness from his book, My Story, 50 Memories from 50 Years of Service. It was one of the most difficult uh, exhibitions or visitor experience to curate. We knew that this one was going to be different because it wasn't talking about a theme, it was talking about a person. It was very clear to us that we wanted something uh, of a visitor experience that uh, was not so typical uh, in terms of how we interpreted a person's life. So not museum-like, not only panels. And that was one of the most fundamental components of curating this exhibition is that it needed to be relatable. It needed to reflect the human behind the vision uh, that made Dubai what it is today. Marjan and her team went to great lengths to make sure the pavilion reflected the grand and inspiring vision of His Highness, but also a space that was relatable and warm and welcoming. And so a lot of thought and intention was put in every detail of the design, starting with the exterior. We wanted it to represent the development of the city of Dubai. We wanted it to represent the, the past and the future, but also it needed to have a component to it that represented the values. So the facade is a, a mix of stone uh, that's sand in color that represents the sands of Dubai, of the city of Dubai, but it also has a steel to depict progress. And one of the inspirations to the design of that facade is the Dubai Creek. Uh, now, if you know um, a bit of the history of Dubai, what has really opened up our economy is the investments that we've made in dredging the creek and making it wider to welcome ships from all over the world. So the facade is also inspired by the way the creek has expanded over the years. In addition, the entrance to the pavilion had a very specific reference. So it's not just any door that you enter into this pavilion. We wanted to create the same sense of welcome that uh, traditional houses have in the UAE. So the idea was uh, how wonderful would it be to create a replica of His Highness's grandfather's door uh, in a place called Shindiqa in, in downtown Dubai. So we replicated it and you actually enter that door and it's like you have to open the door to go in. So there is the sense of welcome, but the design is exactly what it is in the El Shandaka area. What this pavilion brings to life is an embodiment of that vision, a vision which embraces the past with its traditions and heritage, but is fiercely forward looking, ambitious and optimistic. Anita explains. I think it's pride pride in, in who who you are. The Maktoums are very proud people and they want their people to have the best. So the, I think the inspiration comes from the history, from their forefathers, but they don't stay in the past. You know, they're, they're always moving forward to make life better. And from what I can see and from what I've read in, in Sheikh Mohammed's book is that the vision is to make life better and better for everybody who lives in, in the UAE. It's always going from better to the best, never resting on your laurels, always reach for the sky, you know, and give whatever tools you can to your people, whether they be expats or UAE nationals, to be able to develop themselves. And Sheikh Rashid had the same. My father would say the same thing when he would go and see Sheikh Rashid, that he's an amazing vision of, of what Dubai... Look at open skies policy for the airport. Who would think in, in those days, you know, in the 60s, for somebody to say, let's open the skies to all the airlines, let's not be a monopoly and let all these airlines come in because that will help business grow. Here, Anita is referring to Sheikh Rashid al Maktoum, the father of Sheikh Mohammed and the former ruler of Dubai. The Vision Pavilion showcases how this forward facing vision starts from His Highness's childhood. In the first gallery, 
An animation chronicles the time Sheikh Mohammed spent in the desert as a child, his love for nature and animals, but also the story when he got bit by a scorpion. Particularly when he's bit by the Scorpio is that the message is there is good in everything, even if it seems bad at the first space. So when he was bit by the scorpion, the lesson was that it hurt, but then I'm completely safe from scorpio bites for the rest of my life. Uh, and yes, it hurt, uh, but I'm somehow stronger after that experience. And it's sort of like the rite of passage. But the message is that the need to overcome challenges, which became really a, a core theme of the city of Dubai uh, as it continued to develop. So there is this whole message that the city of Dubai continues to innovate, continues to be resilient, continues to overcome challenges. In 2000, when Russia Terminal was built, it was the only terminal with gates in the region. And then Terminal 3, where you have Concourse A, Terminal 3 was the largest terminal in the world. And then Concourse A was the only terminal in the world specifically built for the A380. And everybody laughed at it. Everybody said, oh, these are... Uh, you know, white elephants. I've heard so many white elephant stories for Dubai from the days of the Trade Center when what do they want to build a tower in the middle of the desert? Look at us now. Between the first and second gallery, visitors go through a transition space designed like a cabinet of curiosities. Glass jars and glass boxes house a number of insects and drawings and sketches and collections from His Highness. I didn't know that he could draw, <laughs> you know, he had all those sketches of that. I didn't know that. And he's very good. I didn't know he was so interested in, in you know, in collecting insects. And it was almost like he had his own little research lab there. Um, I knew he had a lot of curiosity. I know he knows the desert like the back of his hand and old traditions that the Bedouin have taught him, he knows. And from this intricate showcase, visitors are greeted in the second gallery by a 50-ton marble sculpture of a horse. It's not any horse, but specifically Dubai Millennium, one of Sheikh Mohammed's favorite horses. Projected onto the magnificent sculpture is a show that contains some of the poetry authored by His Highness. That poetry, we had it narrated by this gentleman called Saif Sadi, who is known to be an orator of His Highness's poems. So that's also something that a lot of people don't know about, but it was part of the details in this whole exhibition that we needed to make sure that we were respecting the life of His Highness as much as we could to the level of making sure that the orator of his poetry was the person who always orates his poems. In the end of the show in the horse gallery, there is a very poignant uh, moment where Millennium actually wins the race uh, for the first time in, in Dubai, on sand. So in the second gallery, you get introduced to the passion of His Highness, which is horse racing, but there is, a, you know, there is a metaphor. It's a metaphor to his love for horse racing and for the uh, relationships that he had with his horses during difficult races. It's also a lesson of hard work, passion and perseverance takes you a long way. And having the courage to take risks. This is His Highness, but it's also reflected in the city of Dubai. What we see today as a city is not an overnight success. It's something that depended a lot on hard work, but also to be passionate towards the work that we had. And going into the third and final gallery, Marjan and her team showcased the human element of the vision of His Highness. In this room, you see a montage of interviews of 30 people speaking about their experience and connection to Dubai. One road going from the airport over the Maktoum Bridge, with really nothing else in between except the beautiful desert. Don't feel the joy, feel the hell out, so we interviewed over 30 uh, individuals 
And the way that we chose these individuals were, you know, we wanted people that we knew of in the community. We didn't necessarily seek the famous because we wanted to represent people who were just normal people who were part of the development of the city, but of course, extraordinary in their own ways. And when we interviewed them, they naturally talked about the role His Highness played in the development of this uh, city. So that was really wonderful for them to surface that element of what Dubai meant to them and their time in Dubai. And you would see it in the in what was the final outcome of that uh, gallery is that what we did was really interesting in the sense that we created a narrative of the uh, development of the city of Dubai and the different industries. We chose people who happened to cross paths in those inter- industries. And then we re- weaved all of what we got from them in the interviews into what the final product was. Anita Mehra shares how the growth of Dubai can be tracked through the flourishing of Dubai Airport itself. It is considered one of the best airports in the world and the busiest international one as well. And fun fact, this airport is 10 years older than the UAE. I remember the airport in 1971 when Terminal 1 was built. Prior to that, there was the smaller airport, which you see in in many, many photographs. Um, And prior to that, the, the flying boats used to land on the creek. But there was always a vision of taking it from strength to strength. So as an example, we celebrated the billionth passenger in 2018. But the very interesting thing is that the first 50 years or so is when we had 500 million. The next 10 years, we got the next 500 million. And so you could see then how everything was done better, faster, technology was brought in, um, people got more educated, look at all the universities, all of the whole infrastructure of Dubai helped Dubai Airport to get to where it is. It can't do it on its own. It's that principle of openness in the vision of His Highness that underlines the growth of Dubai, one that is based on interconnectedness and diversity. His his vision was always that it needs to be a place of diversity and where people would feel they would love to be there. Always spoken in that way. And Sheikh Rashid was the same. And, and also the vision of Sheikh Rashid and Sheikh Mohammed was one of people have to work hard. You can't get to any place if you don't work hard. And the work ethic is really important. And that is the beauty of Dubai. When Expo finally opened, His Highness paid a visit to the Vision Pavilion and saw the galleries inside. The animation chronicling his childhood, his collection items, his poetry, a sculpture of his horse, Dubai Millennium, and a replica of his grandfather's door. The team was eagerly awaiting His Highness's reaction. I think... If you ask me how that visit was, I think the best way for me to describe it is in the tweet that he had less than an hour after he visited. And he his tweet basically said, thank you to the creatives who brought my biography to life. And for me, that was the biggest testament that I think we did something right. You know, my opinion, he is Dubai. You know, he is. Without his vision, none of none of what we see now would have happened. Um, His love for his country is incredible. The story is really part and parcel of the story of Dubai. So it was very important for us, for the international visitor to understand that we didn't over develop overnight, that it's really a result of hard work. It's a result of being a resilient people, but also more importantly, uh, being a, a city that's very visionary by virtue of the individual who leads us. And that if you're part of the city, nothing is impossible, truly. It doesn't matter where you're from, but if you're part of the city of Dubai, you always think optimistically, regardless of the challenges that face you. You come through this pavilion and you feel proud that you are part of that story and you're proud and you get to know a little more about uh, the man behind the vision. But you know him already, but you get to know a bit more about him and you come out and, and say that I'm proud of being part of the city of Dubai.
Inside Expo takes you behind the scenes at Expo 2020 Dubai, sharing our stories and others across the 170-year history of this global event. Learn more by visiting virtualexpodubai.com. Inside Expo is produced by Kerning Cultures Network. We release episodes every Tuesday and Friday. Subscribe to Inside Expo on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. If you enjoyed the show, share it with your friends and leave us a review.